So this is the second video outlining how to use uh, the, Chicago, the free Chicago uh, visualization uh, tool that I created uh, to help people understand the, the relationship between space and time uh, with uh, homicides uh, as they were recorded by the Chicago Police Department. Uh, what I've done here is I've set up a very basic map. Uh, the uh, color gradient basically indicates uh, population density. I did that through the visualization tab. Uh, here, and then uh, I've changed the scroll range on the 1980 total population. Uh, so, for example, a very light area uh, indicates that there uh, is less population, and the very dark areas are the densest populations. Uh, so you can see that there are some exceptions along the lakefront up here, uh, and um, uh, that's the basic principle. And then uh, what I did was I ran a data visualization um, for uh, the month of March, uh, 1978, through December of 1982, uh, and have highlighted uh, the individual, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, individual uh, information about each homicide. Uh, so the darker areas in red mean that there are more than one um, homicide uh, that had occurred at that location. Um, and these are sort of normalized, so they're not exact locations for technically families, uh, but they are basically uh, intersections, so you see that they're at each um, street intersection. And uh, you can tell that the blue is water, obviously, and then the green is parks. Uh, if for some reason that was polluting my understanding of the data, I could just go to layers and then turn off all natural elements, and in a second it will re-render with just uh, the population data. Uh, so you can see, for example, here that some bodies were actually found in the lake uh, during that time. And these, of course, do indicate where the bodies are found. So one interesting correlation you can see immediately is that uh, high-dense areas, uh, for obvious reasons, are not necessarily where bodies are found. Um, so uh, the middle of the loop, for example, uh, not a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, but then you can see that things start to spread out, and there's high density um, somewhat north and west, um, south, etc. So uh, one of the reasons for the second video is to demonstrate uh, that you can use this to animate over time. So I'm just going to click the Animate button now. And what will happen is it will visualize um, each uh, event uh, as listed here. Uh, and you can track them as you go. Uh, but it will list them uh, in order of event occurrence. So um, it's going to be a little crowded, but I'm actually going to show the event numbers on the map at the same time. And just click Animate. So there's event number one, two, you can start to see sort of cluster, event three, getting a couple of events in the same place, new event there. You could actually watch this um, and get it generated for uh, hours. It's actually fairly simple. Um, all I'm doing is uh, getting the coordinates and then um, executing uh, one per. You can cluster these. I wouldn't suggest clustering or changing the cluster while you're uh, going through the animation, uh, but uh, you can also change the uh, rate. When you cluster, uh, what you're doing is you're just uh, grouping them by date um, or by some attribute. Uh, so right now, uh, we're starting with April, because we started in March. The first events occur in April, and uh, we can see the event detail for any one of those events. So perhaps uh, the event numbers won't show up until we're actually done with the animation. Uh, but perhaps I wanted to see more information about uh, event number 9625. I can click on it and then get some details about it uh, when the animation is complete. Uh, you'll also see that there are some colors. Under the Visualization tab right now, uh, I've assigned a color to um, each of the uh, races. Uh, so here, uh, Caucasian is white, um, uh, African American is uh, in red, uh, and then uh, Latino uh, and uh, the other races, as indicated by the police, are not actually uh, a special color right now. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could change pretty much anything you'd want with the um, with the tool. So that's the basic idea. Uh, again, very quickly written. Uh, and so, you know, a couple of people have, have emailed me and asked for some directions, and I thought the easiest thing to do would just be to uh, demonstrate the tool here. Uh, I just ran the uh, visualization again, and you can see now that there are um, some bright red spots here. Uh, that means that there's sort of high activity in terms of homicides, uh, so perhaps we would want to zoom in on those to get more information about them. Uh, you can do a quick zoom, uh, like so. That was just a click and a drag. Uh, and then uh, my animation is still running in the background. Uh, I could choose to stop it, animation. Um, or I could choose to cluster. You can also save sequences. Um, so if you wanted to see the entire sequence, you could. Or you can make a screenshot 
Uh, so you just click Save Image, and then uh, Dialog comes up, and you can save this in bitmap format. Download one, and um, that's just the toolkit. I'll do one more video just demonstrating uh, a couple of nuances, and then I think that should be it. Thanks, and uh, feel free to shoot me an email or visit. Uh, the website is chicago.lgrace.com. Thank you.